Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here inside the IBM Speakeasy Lounge at Saster 2024 in San Mateo. I'm joined by Raj Data. You're the VP of uh, Partnerships for AI and Software at IBM. Uh, what's that job entail? So the job actually entails uh, a, a lot of different things, but what the, the main focus for, for my organization is is to help software companies globally leverage IBM technology, build off of IBM technology, and then monetize it. Okay, so before we talk about the IBM technology specifically, uh, tell me about the conversations you're having with some of these partners, uh, specifically around generative AI. Yeah and uh, what they're looking to do with it. So obviously, as we know, the AI space has completely exploded yes. uh, over the past couple of years. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, the, that's the buzz everywhere. But what the, the key area is, is software companies are trying to understand how to leverage AI technologies to take it to market faster and then monetize it. And you know, many software companies, their bread and butter is not AI. So yeah. what, what a lot of the conversations I'm having with companies is how do they build the, the the skill sets and the technology to scale fast. And, and that's what IBM has been able to offer is we go in and uh, help companies that aren't able to go and hire thousands of data scientists. We actually have created a Watson X platform that allows clients to build on top of it so they get the AI capabilities on day one versus having to build it from scratch. Yeah, and so they know their business. Yeah, but maybe not AI, and you're and you're bringing that expertise to them. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Now, what about from your perspective? You partner with thousands of software companies, right? And so, can you talk about the the role of the partnership in helping IBM drive AI adoption? Absolutely. So, you know, as as companies are adopting our technology, what we're also doing is we're helping them with the skill sets. We have a fairly large engineering organization that will help them build out the technology. Once they go live, we built a whole partner ecosystem where we actually can help them sell the technology in the marketplace and leverage that. So we do a lot of joint marketing together. We help them. We're helping all these software companies really scale to the next level with our AI components underneath it. Yeah, and so from your from an IBM perspective, then the more that happens, I guess, the better it is for Watson X, right? It gets absolutely. Better, yeah. I mean, I, you know, like I, I came back a year ago, and, and one of my uh, goal and vision for for this technology was really to be able to flood the market because typically you don't hear about IBM and AI. You hear about all the other players, but as you start digging underneath it, and you see some of the largest companies that are out there, um, they're using our AI technology underneath it and building off of it. And then also now, you know, we're here at Saster this week. Uh, some of the smallest companies to, you know, the mid-stage companies are all starting to leverage the AI capabilities that IBM has. Yeah, I was a little surprised to see you here just yeah. because Saster is typically the startup yeah. uh, arena, right? And so why, why are the startups so important out there? The startup, the startup ecosystem is actually very important because if you, as, as these companies are the, are the key companies that don't really have that skill set to really build off of it, nor do they have the financials behind it. And so, you know, the IBM model that we've created out there is essentially we're opening up AI for, for the broader public. And, you know, the startup ecosystem is very important to us because, you know, a lot of these companies are able to build and grow much faster than some larger enterprises. And we're seeing their adoption going into enterprises. Yeah. Also, startups need the ability to govern the technologies and make sure that they put the guardrails around it so that they can be enterprise grade and enterprise ready. Yeah, I find startups aren't quite as worried about crossing every I and or across every T and dot in every I before they go to market, right? They, well, they have to go fast. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And which is not what you get from the big software yeah. companies. So I know IBM has a product called Embeddable AI. Mm -hmm. And so can you talk about what that is and why that's valuable to partners? Yeah, so Embeddable AI, is, it's actually not a product. It's, it, the base of it is our Watson X platform and our Watson X technologies. And what essentially it is, is allows our partners and clients to build their solutions on top of the platform. So essentially embedding into their existing solutions. And that's what you know uh, embeddable AI truly is. And that's where we're seeing a lot of market motion because if you look at it, do you wanna spend all your time, if you're a startup or even a large company, figuring out AI models, building the AI technology, or do you want to go somewhere where it's already trusted, proven, been in research for you know many, many years and building off of that? Yeah, uh, not quite plug and play, but pretty turnkey. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's the goal. Yeah, and so uh, of all those, uh, partners you have. Can you can you share a few examples of maybe some notable uh, yeah. successes? So, I mean, like I mentioned, we're, we're across the board with large uh, software companies to, uh, you know, small, earlier stage companies. But, you know, one of the, the 
you know, more recent announcements that we had was uh, with ServiceNow, where they're leveraging our, our technologies for their Now Assistant and leveraging our models to really scale that and make it uh, a lot more intelligent. And so the interesting part was ServiceNow already had some of their models, and now they're leveraging our models as well, creating a layer ahead of it, and then we're going in and leveraging our assistance technology for that. Uh, another one that you know we're we're sitting in the the same area here, but you know is is True Golf. Yeah, they're actually you know a, a virtual I'm a big golf fan of that. virtual yeah. golf simulator, and they're leveraging our technology because inside their software to do predictions and mapping of of where your where the ball is going to go, what your you know where your stroke was off, etc. So that area we're seeing a tremendous amount of growth, and then you know you can go into the financial services, for example, you have something like uh, our company, uh, Quantum AI, um, that I am actually meeting with tonight. And what their focus has been is going to the investment organizations, focus people that are doing you know, day-to-day um, investments throughout the markets and leveraging uh, the data that's out there with AI technologies to get the best output for, for their, uh, you know, for their clientele. So it's, it's been a, it's, it's been a really interesting area where we're getting a chance to you know, see from end to end some of the coolest, um, you know, new AI offerings that are coming up and bleeding edge. Yeah, the ServiceNow example is interesting too because they do have a lot of their own models. I'm yep. very familiar with doing, but uh, I think it's. Um, I think people are starting to understand there is not one model to rule them all. Agreed. Right? And I know uh, IBM's approach to AI is you talk a lot about being open, mm -hmm. right, and, and uh, having an open approach. So can you talk about what that is mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and the value proposition there? Yeah, I mean, our, our philosophy has always been to have an open approach. And the reason behind being open is because AI shouldn't just be for one type of company or one certain company. That's one critical area is allowing... Uh, various inputs across different models, different types of offerings that are out there into one big approach. And we made a pretty big announcement with Granite when we opened that up um, you know, earlier this year. But what's also very important is with the openness comes a lot of cost reduction. So what we're seeing with this is now you're able to go into smaller models versus having to use one large chunky model. And at the same time, you know, one model is not meant for all businesses. Yeah. So you need different types of models in order to really help companies scale. And that's what our belief has been from the get-go. Yeah, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess the success of ChatGPT uh, got everybody thinking about large language models. Yep. And while that's great for one little aspect exactly. of AI, there's also small language models, multimodal, real-time, exactly. right? Yep. And, yep. and uh, those all require different models. And yep. so, um, uh, you know, I, I think your approach is really one that works there. Yeah, and you know, and we're, we're seeing a lot of companies that want to develop their own models, right? And they've been doing some of those things, but how do they leverage those models along with what we have to offer, right? We're, we're look, we've, we're creating something called a model factory where you know you can take all various disparate models, put them together, but also put some governance around it, and then be able to take it to market much faster. Right? Yeah, and I, I think that it's almost like. Uh, uh, a catalog yeah. of, of AI models. Yeah. Right? So. I mean, if you think about it, you know, in the in the cloud space, for example, you really see companies that are just locked into one cloud provider. Yeah. There's a reason behind that, right? You want you want to have uh, duality. You want to have multimodal areas and things like that. And that's what we're really focused on offering. Yeah. And so, you know, given your role and you know the partnerships you work with, and uh, you get to see a lot of really cool advanced technology. Yeah. Uh, looking ahead. What are you most excited about for the end of this year and going into next year with, under the context of AI? I think, you know, all the buzz around AI has been going on now for the past year, year and a half. And what we're seeing now is now that the strategy is being set, now companies are really looking to adopt and figure out how to scale. And I think next year is going to be a really big and important year for us because this is where we're going to see a lot of uh, additional investment and focus. Because I think a lot of folks thus far have been tinkering with AI wanting to, you know, potentially take it to market, but then there's always, they're a little bit nervous on, you know, do I have the guardrails? How much is it going to cost? But I think now as we're evolving into this next uh, stage of AI, next year is going to be a time where we're going to see AI scale to a completely different level. And, and hopefully when we meet next year, I can tell you about like 10 more cool yeah. use cases, you know, that, and, and we can do this over our golf game. Yes. And, you know, and we, and we can hopefully have, we'll be wearing wearables or something like that yeah. with AI telling me why I'm such a bad golfer. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's where the whole market's going. And every single component of our day-to-day -day lives is going to slowly incorporate AI into it. Yeah. So uh, last question, I, and I'm glad you brought up the aspect of some people being nervous about it, right? Mm -hmm. And I talked to a lot of uh, developers, uh, 
you know, both corporate and also at ISVs, they're just not sure when to pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. And they're very afraid of doing something wrong. And so what's yeah. a couple of pieces of advice you could give developers or, or organizations on how to move forward with AI and be comfortable that it's going to work. Yeah, this actually goes around the approach of how you know we built out our partnership organization for IBM, where we, we work with our, our clients and our partners to really help with the initial MVP, feel comfortable with one or two strong use cases that can be applied to AI. After that, once you can slowly take that to production, you see it out in the marketplace, that's when you can really grow. So we spend a lot of time with our partners. We don't, we don't want to just go pick a random thing and just you know, take it to market. We do use case focused um, you know, delivery. So we'll have our engineering team work with engineers at, at software companies, at other larger companies to really build that component feel comfortable with it. And then what we're also doing is putting the governance around it. Mm -hmm. And our Watson X governance solution is something that's completely different than what we've seen in the marketplace. And what it's allowing everyone to do is actually put the guardrails on there, ensure that you don't have biases, ensure that you know uh, the what, what the output is coming out as is actually true and correct versus an incorrect uh, type of output, right? So, and that's been one of the key areas because many of these companies have been hesitant because they don't want to, you know, put something out there in the marketplace that's completely incorrect. Yeah. Right? So, uh, I think that's been one of the key components that is, is helping us with the adoption and driving that further. Yeah, yeah. So don't try and boil the ocean. Exactly. And I, I think one of the piece of advice I give into is to, oh, don't don't also expect perfection. Yeah. Right. AI is learning, and uh, I always said the entry le level to AI is once you're better than people. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. if you're doing analytics or something, people make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And so once you hit that threshold of better than people, now it's all, you know, now it's all positive and it will get better over time. Yeah. So. I mean, we, we also uh, introduced, uh, you know, a, a new offering such as Instruct Lab, where right. it's actually learning. It's continuously learning, right? So it's like a baby that keeps growing and growing, and then as the more data comes in, as it continues to learn, it's getting smarter and intelligently every day, right? So that's exactly yeah. what you're saying. Well, maybe so. next year uh, our avatars will do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won't need me. Yeah, yeah. So anything else you want to add? No, I, yeah. I really appreciate the time. It was great to meet you, yeah. and I'm looking forward to us spending more time together. Yeah, me as well. I think that that's, uh, it's great, and keep up the work. I think uh, a lot of those startups there need your help. So appreciate it. Yeah. So, right. Anyways, on behalf of Raj Dada from IBM, I'm Zias Caravalo from CK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast. <laughs>